So a couple of months ago, I made a video on realism artists that you should follow if you draw. And while I know it's important to have role models and people that inspire you, I believe it's equally as important, if not more important, to surround yourself with people that are around the same stage of their art careers as you, whether that's the drawing stage, the improving stage, or having a gallery show. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be telling you about a couple emerging artists in the realism field. Now you may ask why these artists don't have millions of followers and their works might not be shown all around the world. But one important lesson that I've learned in art school and something that applies to life in general is that you just can't do it alone. I know as artists, we tend to have a specific personality and I know for my myself especially, I am extremely introverted and I prefer to do the entire art making process alone from setting up the studio to drawing, recording, editing, and posting on social media. I know it might not seem like it to you, but a lot of the times behind the scenes, it's still a very daunting process to me to talk in front of the camera. I think that's why many of us chose to make art because it's a part of our personality and it's such a solitary kind of hobby which requires us to be alone to try to bring out this image that's in our head back into reality. But believe me when I say you need help, maybe not in your art making process, but there's a lot more to being an artist than just making art. But everyone's art journey is different. Some of you might go into the spotlight because your work's went viral or you got noticed in the gallery or it takes some people years to build up this portfolio to show to the world. And I believe that's why it's so important to surround yourself with people that are at the same stage of your art careers. So you can ask about each other, exchange your ideas, talk about the techniques that you use it since, you know, especially in realism field, there's a limited amount of materials that we use like charcoal, pencil. So technique becomes very important for us. And just to ask about each other's journey and opportunities that we might come across. One last piece of advice that I want to give to you before we start is don't be afraid to reach out to others, whether that's a brand that you want to collaborate with or an artist that you look up to or whether you just have questions. In the age of social media, it's so easy to connect with others whether that's through commenting or following them and messaging them personally, a lot of artists will take the time to share their techniques and journey with you if you just ask. I've discovered so many amazing artists like that just by commenting or sending them a message, be like, hey, I love what you're doing. Do you want to talk? Or hey, like, I love what you did here. How did you do that? It's almost like I've built up a resource for myself of artists over the years that I love, that inspire me, that I can learn from. And it's all done just through commenting and reaching out. So like I said, these artists are going to be realism emerging artists, more specifically in the hyper-realism field. And I think what makes them stand out more than others is their unique original art and their social media content. Because I think with the rise of TikTok and Instagram Reels, I think it's more important than ever to showcase your art. So these artists usually create a lot of videos featuring their art, art making process, or even just their personalities on social media. Now there's just no way that I can feature all of the artists that I know on here just because of the video format. So feel free to do your own research. And without further ado, here are the four realism artists that are emerging that you should know if you draw. The first artist is Uma Machoa. She is a self-taught hyperrealism artist. She works mainly with large portraits and shots of the upper torso. And she seems to be mainly focused on emotions, whether it's utilizing grief or anxiety to promote her message of empowerment. Her rise began with TikTok when she first was putting out videos of her interacting with her older pieces and showing off the works that she had made and it resonated with a lot of viewers. From then on, she continued to build her social media off of her frequent videos showing her drawing process of her newest works. The next artist we have is Laura Restrepo, and usually when I mention that an artist works big, that means it's usually life size or the work is hard to carry, but Laura takes that to a completely different level. Based in Canada and graduated from the University of Ottawa and York University, Laura's portraits attempt to capture the features of individuals in a particular fragment of time. She refers to charcoal as a dark dust and aims to prolong the existence of those individuals, at least on the surface of the paper. 
Her works celebrate life, memories, and immeasurable beauty of what is ephemeral, much like how memories fade, time elapses, and our existence evaporates. Next up we have Dylan Eakins. Now I know this might be a little cheating because he has become a big figure in the realism field through his social medias in the recent years, specifically his TikTok. And uh, he is a little bit past the point of emerging, but he is definitely someone important that we should know. Dylan makes his drawings purely off of photographs. And the thing that stands out the most about him is his ability to communicate his thoughts to his audience so that it's relatable and informational. Dylan usually begins his videos by giving a quick greeting to the audience, then kind of explaining his thought process in the recent times and his progress on his works, then showing a part of his process. He does this so often and in such a unique way where the audience almost feels familiar and friendly with him even if it's their first time viewing his content. I've been working on a new drawing for the last eight days, um, so if you want to see what kind of crap I can get up to in eight days, here's your video. So for the last couple of days, I've done nothing but goosebumps, uh, which I've never drawn before, but it's kind of some of the most fun I've had on skin texture. With the popularity of Instagram and TikTok, we can all forget about YouTube, of course. And another personality that is big on YouTube and also praised for skills is Carly Renee, who is an Australian artist that recently had her own solo show in the Linux Gallery. Carly studied film and television and worked for Channel 9 for several years before pursuing art full-time just two years ago. When I first discovered Carly, she was mostly working on wildlife and big cats such as tigers. Nowadays, she pulled a bit away from that and focuses on the human figure and movements. Carly creates a weekly vlog for her artworks talking about her process and thoughts on YouTube, whether it's in her personal life or artistic career, and it really gives some really good insights and things behind the scenes. And she records almost every single step of her process, so it's a great way to learn from her as well. Those were the four emerging artists that I think you should know if you're in the realism field, especially hyperrealism. And I believe that, again, reiterating what I said before, I think it's very important to surround yourself and be inspired by these a little bit lesser known artists than the big giant artists like Jonah Dry or Calvin Okafor. Just because these artists usually have a bit more time to connect with you and reply to your comments and DMs, so it's a lot easier to talk to them about their process and their journey and their experiences. I definitely plan to do more of these videos, whether it's bigger artists or emerging artists that you might not know of, just because, like I said, it's so hard to incorporate everyone into one single video. And let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.